Good morning, folks. It is the morning of November the 6th, 2021. I think it's extremely important that I share some truths that I learned over a long period of time as my I was disabused of my own naivety. We are witnessing an unprecedented attack of groupthink against individual autonomy in Canada. We're seeing people being fired from their jobs purely by stating the obvious fact that we have the constitutional right to have autonomy over our own bodies. But what concerns me most is the thinking that is rapidly being adopted in Canada. I want to make it clear that what I'm about to tell you applies to any ideology. I don't care whether it's Nazism, Fascism, Communism, Radical Socialism, Political Islamism. All collective ideologies share the psychological phenomena that I'm about to share right now. So I wrote the following this morning. When a person who is unfamiliar with the grip that groupthink can have on people encounters this phenomenon, the behavior of those under its influence will appear to him or her to be an impenetrable mystery. Yet if this person is reasonably self-aware, encountering this psychological oddity will lead him or her to try to understand what it is they are experiencing. It should be stated that the group thinkers themselves are totally unaware of their own ideological possession. Therefore, the following defines this encounter with this human equivalent of the Borg from Star Trek, where resistance is futile and you must lower your shields. Number one, for all the effort the person who is unfamiliar with groupthink may apply to understand the phenomenon, and this person will likely expend a great deal of energy trying. Those who are under groupthink sway will absolutely refuse to understand the free thinker, since self-awareness is completely beyond their grasp. In fact, groupthink requires the opposite that they deny themselves and their own unique identity to assume the thinking of their preferred in-group. Two, this will first lead them to feel pity for the free thinker because the group thinkers only think as they do because they're so enlightened. Three, they will attempt to persuade the free thinker to negate themselves to join them in the collective acceptance of the wisdom of the in-group. Four, as the free thinker resists, individuals in the group will become adamant about the righteousness and justice of their thinking, which leads to vitriol being directed toward the free thinker's obstinance. Five, they will labor a free thinker as a Cro-Magnon, Philistine, racist pig, privileged bidiot, bigot, or some other such drivel in order to signal to the group that that person has now been declared anathema. Six, they will then marginalize, silence, and disenfranchise the free thinker, and if possible, render their very presence superfluous. Today, vast numbers of the non-compliant are being fired from their jobs for the unforgivable sin of thinking for themselves. Seven, worse than all of this, is that those who may state they loathe groupthink, yet who do nothing to stop it, are undeniably un under its influence and therefore are equally guilty as those who first propagated this mind worm. I actually believe that God sent me to Norway to learn these very difficult truths. I have met very few Norwegians who say that they like the law of Yenta or tall poppy syndrome. Yet I have never met one who is not undeniably under its influence, for even the freest thinking among them exhibits fear of group censor. We either dare to be ourselves, 
by dealing with our own true psychological and spiritual nature, or we will submit ourselves to the dictates of others whose very ideology states they do not care for our individual well-being, but only for preserving the sacred uniformity within the group. And now with all the censorship that we see, and, and Trudeau is stating point blank that uh, free speech is not without its limits, and with the government's demands that all should receive a, a uh, mRNA protocol that is it is now known to have uh, serious side effects, All, albeit as rare as they are, it still has them. One has to ask, is the danger greater of being infected with COVID-19 or is the danger greater of having its antidote, so-called? And then the other question, of course, that is never asked by these people is how on earth did it come about and why is Pfizer in the very laboratory which is the source of the pathogen? These are all things to think and pray about. And uh, hopefully it gives you some tools to understand where we are headed. For the only thing that we can do is dare to be ourselves. God bless you and have a great day.